SCOTUS refuses to hear Texas complain. Is this it? Is it game, set, match? Rudy Giuliani is vowing the fight is not yet over, but at some point, you have to take a look at what's happening. We have to get real with this. And for those of you that are ready now to pounce and say, Pastor, you got to keep the faith, and, and it's Trump 2020, and uh, listen to me. Let's, let's get real here. Number one, the man won in a landslide. I'm sorry, he did, but he has been denied. It's, it's not any more complicated than that. The powers that be, I'm talking about the ruling class, they have decided this isn't going to happen. Texas was told by the Supreme Court they don't have standing to complain about this. In other words, Texas, it's none of your business how other states run their elections. Doesn't matter that these other states actually violated the Constitution. Texas, you have nothing to say in it. And these other states that joined you in this matter, I'm sorry, you were not aggrieved. You were not hurt by what they did. That's what the Supreme Court said. That was their cop-out punt play. And I realize that the president himself can try to make the case that he was hurt by this, but the bottom line is these are two back-to-back -back rulings, not hearing the, the Trump legal team's complaint about Pennsylvania, and now they're not going to listen to the Texas complaint about the four battleground states and the fact that whether you want to de debate and get into the whole Dominion voting machines and irregularities and kicking the observers out and ballots found in bins under tables, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all that is moot. We have four states in clear violation of constitutional law. And the Supreme Court has said, sorry, we're not going to hear it. Now, what was it that the powers that be said, no, this man does not get re-election. I'm going to tell you two things that Trump did that cost him. Number one, it was not his tweets. It was not his positions. It was not his policies. In fact, among the so-called ruling class, um, financially, they did very well under Donald Trump. The American people did very well under Donald Trump. In fact, the majority of Americans, which include Democrats, said, yeah, they did do better financially under Donald Trump than they did under Barack Obama. And they said this even while the pandemic and the lockdowns were in full swing. I had said two years ago, the only thing that can take Donald Trump out is an economic fallout, an absolute depression. And I got excoriated by other members of the conservative media, including Rush Limbaugh, who said, there is absolutely nothing that the Democrats can do to kill this economy. It's too strong. Well, guess what, Rush? They figured out how to do it. They figured out how to turn a pandemic into a plandemic that absolutely inflicted grievous financial pain on the American people, by and large. And they had help with their willing cohorts, who happened to be Democratic governors of Democratic states. Look at what Cuomo was doing to New York, shutting down all in inside dining now. Right Christmas week, what's happening in Illinois, Michigan, California. They're killing business, waiting for Uncle Joe to get there and write him a big fat check. But in the meantime, the people pay the price. And Fox News and these other outlets, they can run all the heart-rendering stories about these letters to Santa Claus that are being intercepted and they're sharing on their airwaves now about kids saying, Santa, my dad isn't working and my mom doesn't have any money. And yeah. But again, this, this was all contrived. But Trump made a fatal mistake at the beginning of this pandemic. Not the optics of he needed to appear more compassionate, he needed to appear to be on top of it. He never, ever, 
ever, ever. This was a huge mistake on Trump's part. Never should have allowed Dr. Fauci to become the face, the voice, and the expert on handling infectious outbreaks. That never should have happened. This is where Donald Trump was ill-served by the enemy within, Mike Pence. I've said it, and I'm going to keep saying it. By the way, during this, this whole contested process, where has the so-called loyal, valiant vice president been? Oh, he's been out there. He's been campaigning, you know, for uh, the Senate runoff in Georgia. And he's been saying the the correct talking points that even the rhinos are saying, well, the president has every right to challenge this in the courts. What you did not hear out of Mike Pence's mouth was this ringing, hey, our president, the man that it is my honor to serve with, we, as the president and vice president, we are going to fight because we've been robbed. You didn't hear him say any of that. There was no passion. There was that polite, scripted, dutiful Mike Pence, the enemy within. And this leads into another part of the Achilles heel for Donald Trump. He's got family that don't help him. And I don't think even the president fully understands how much Jared Kushner hurt him. See, it was Jared Kushner and his wife, that would be the daughter of President Trump, Ivanka, they liked Mike Pence. Now, I'm sure Ivanka thought it as a, as a brilliant political strategy to bring on a guy like Mike Pence who was seen as, yes, the, the establishment would like him, the establishment rhinos would like him. You know, kind of the whole Reagan-Bush split ticket thing. But Kushner has, has made more moves behind the scenes that have hurt Donald Trump deeply. And I know Donald Trump doesn't like it, and he, he, he automatically goes in defense mode when somebody criticizes or attacks one of his family members. But they picked Mike Pence. Pence, in turn, was put in charge of the pandemic because he had handled pandemics in Indiana. Bum, ba -dum, bum. And Mike Pence just happens to know personally Dr. Fauci. And you would have thought that President Trump or somebody close to him would have warned him immediately. Hey, 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 hey. President Reagan realized he made a mistake in listening to Dr. Fauci. Look, look some history up on that. And so by letting Fauci be out there initially in these daily press briefings and doing the talking, he became the go-to guy. And when the president realized that he was giving the American people the type of advice and direction that did not line up with what the president knew instinctively needed to be done, then immediately the media was able to portray this as, aha, Donald Trump is at odds with America's number one health expert. And even though President Trump tried to say, you know, nice things, I like Dr. Fauci and I'm for the science, and I, I, Donald Trump knew instinctively that this came from China. He knew instinctively that, that masks and mandates were not going to have in any way a mitigation or a tamping down of this virus outbreak. What the president should have done is what he does so well. He should have gone out, he should have had public rallies, not standing there in that White House briefing room with a hostile press. He should have gone out and directly made connection and appeals to the American people right from day one, just traveling the country, talking every day from a different location to Americans about we're going to get through this. We need to take care of our vulnerable, but we need to look at CDC studies before this particular outbreak where we were always told by the CDC, do not quarantine the healthy, quarantine the sick. And yet we did a complete 180 and the total opposite of everything that we've ever done. Even Fauci initially knew 
We don't need to be masking up. And then he got the official talking points, and because he's not really a doctor or a real scientist that really knows how to help people, he is a career bureaucrat who only knows how to CYA himself and stay in that job, and he's accountable to no one, and he can't be fired, but because he wanted to keep that job with the ruling class political elite that they didn't turn on him, he started to pick up the narrative. We need masks. We need goggles. We need shutdown. We need gloves. Donald Trump should have been the point man on this from jump. And if he had pushed back, and if he had come out there, and he had talked straight with the American people about, look, the numbers going up does not necessarily mean that everybody is sick. In fact, we now know from the CDC that 97% of the so-called positive results that we're getting from all of this mass screening, these are false negatives. You may have been around someone that had COVID. You may have been exposed to it, but you yourself are not sick. You are not clinically infected. Is anyone explaining that to the American people? No. Is that information out there? It's out there if you'll go digging for it, but nobody is explaining it because there is there is an advantage for would-be little dictator governors who are seizing power and taking control and these little nerdy health experts that nobody has ever paid any attention to them their whole lives and now all of a sudden they are rock stars and the be all end all and that that publicity has become intoxicating to them and there you are but there was something that trump did within this pandemic that i think he thought was going to really curry favor and really send him into a total landslide re-election. He was looking out and helping Big Pharma. And as Trump supporters, you need to recognize that and you need to call it. Now, he wasn't for Big Pharma the same way that a Dr. Fauci is. Now, Dr. Fauci's for Big Pharma for two reasons. One, he benefits financially from it. Two, he loves this whole idea of the control and the mandates and the things that can be done through this pandemic. Donald Trump is first and foremost, he is a businessman. Donald Trump wanted to be seen on the one hand as being the guy that saved America and saved the world from a virus that really instinctively he knew what it was and what it wasn't. But he also thought that if he revved up the Operation Warp Speed and pushed through these vaccines that there was a big windfall for Big Pharma and in the end that Big Pharma, the business world, and all of the financiers behind this would then rally for a Trump re-election. And you know what? They didn't. Because Donald Trump is not part of the establishment. He's, he's not in the club. And in their mind, it was a freak thing that happened in 2016, and that could not be repeated. And despite the fact that they did well financially under him, they would do well financially under whoever occupies that Oval Office, as long as the person that occupies that Oval Office is going along with the scripted narrative, globalism, and the status quo. The people with money will always make the money. It was the American people for the first time in decades had a real shot and were really beginning to get a real taste again of the American dream. And that is all bye, 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 bye. Now we can talk endlessly about, you know, China and the Joe Biden connection. And I've said before, and I will keep on saying it, don't be fooled by this Hunter Biden investigation. That is a dog and pony show. Eric Swalwell is going to take the fall for everybody. He's just too stupid to know it. Because the American people, they, they, they don't handle really deep, complex things. That's why Hillary has been able to escape all these years. That's why, you know, we've got the media and everybody saying, you know, stop this narrative and this lie of a stolen election. Because it's, it's, it's too deep for people to wade into. There's, there's too much to process. You know, Adolf Hitler said, well, actually it was Joseph Goebbels, his propaganda minister, said, the bigger the lie and the more times you repeat it, the more people will begin to believe it. But also there has to be enough complexity to it that, that people just can't, it, it, it hurts to think about. 
They need the simple. They need the simple. And so even though we, we can look at all of this this plethora of whether it's the whistleblowers coming forward about the election and and stories about dominion voting and states changing their constitutional procedures there's just so much there it's like trying to take a drink of water from a fire hose and it's just too much for the american people to handle and so that's it they want simple it's it's like a president is assassinated before their eyes, John F. Kennedy. And when you start to break it down, what really happened, it was just, it, they, it, it, their heads exploded. They, 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 they couldn't handle it. So they give them the narrative. One lone guy, a nut job up in the, the a, a book depository window with a, with a single shot rifle. Easy peasy. People wrap their heads around it. Off they go. Swalwell, the dope, the idiot, the moron, doesn't believe, doesn't understand. He hasn't been sold out by Donald Trump. He's been sold out by the Democrats. They are all in bed with China. They sold this country out under the Clinton administration. It was the Clinton administration that let China have military secrets and, and any type of computer technology that we developed here when it began to be mass produced by the Chinese assembly lines. We had to sell over and hand over our intellectual rights to everything. China has, has absolutely taken over. And these establishment politicians have reaped financially as a result. And an idiot like Swalwell thought he would get on the gravy train. And yet they don't realize they set him up to be the fall guy. Diane Feinstein isn't going to take the fall. And she had a spy working for her for 25 years. And don't tell me she didn't know. But now all of a sudden, she's got dementia, she's mentally incapacitated, and she's going to go bye, 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 and they aren't going to harass her. They aren't going to harass the new incoming ordained selected president and his son. That's a dog and pony show. Falwell will take the fall, or Swalwell will take the fall. And then it just goes away. So number one, Mr. President... You made Fauci the guy. Then when you tried to pull it back, it was too late. The narrative got away from you. It was too easy for everybody to spin it, that, that, that you weren't on top of it. And no matter how many times you tried to explain what you had done, it was too late. You never should have let Fauci in. But part of that was you took advice from your family and you thought, man, if I can be seen as the guy that saves the world by pushing through and making these vaccines happen, I will become a hero. And... Unfortunately, you're not going to get that crown. Okay, the number two reason it didn't happen. The military-industrial complex. See, conservatives, I'm talking about the conservative people, American patriots, what we consider the, the mass Trump base. We tend to think that, well, the military is always going to be lean toward the conservative because the conservative is traditional and patriotic, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But you do know that it is, it is not that that runs the Pentagon and runs the military. It is globalists who run the military because of money. And the bottom line is they have boosted and built this economy through war. One way or another. Why do you think? Now stop and think about this. You and I who are conservative, we look at somebody like Barack Obama, we think, how did he win election, number one? Well, the first time around he was this rock star and this was seen as a movement of equality, etc. But by the time he was running for re-election, uh, he, he was polling worse than Donald Trump. So how did he get re-elected? Well, because at the end of the day, he didn't do one thing that he said he was going to do when he campaigned about de-escalating wars and bringing our troops home. Uh, he didn't do any of that. In fact, war actually increased under Barack Misobotamus. And see, you bought into the canard that oh, he's obviously a Muslim because he won't use the term uh, Islamic terrorist and he won't use the term radical Islam and... Uh, 
and 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 look at how he won't really take care of business with ISIS. Well, how do I explain this? So it's really simple to get. Drug dealers make their money by getting people hooked, addicted, and coming back for more. So in the healthcare industry, there's really not a push to cure anything because there's no money in the cure. The money is in the treatment. So for the military, there's I'm talking about not the boots on the ground, not the the, 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 the patriots, guys who are in the military by core conviction, even some of the generals, I say some because a lot of them are just pure cut and dried bureaucratic politicians who want to get to the Pentagon. They want that big check. They want to make though that money through their deals with the weapons manufacturers and designers and the lobbyists that pay for all of that. So there's no money to be made if it's peacetime. If we've gone and won the victory. What did Donald Trump do? Donald Trump turned the real boots on the ground, the real generals who were in the trenches loose, and bye-bye ISIS. Now see, you mistakenly thought that by Obama not doing that, that he didn't know what he was doing, he didn't know how to fight a war, but to the military-industrial complex, he was great for business. Cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. The longer it dragged on, the longer we got troops over there. Cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. How dare Donald Trump think he could actually start bringing troops home? And Congress has now stepped in and said, no president will ever do that again. Donald Trump not only de-escalated war, he didn't start any new military entanglements. Can I, can I shock you? Let's say everything on election day was exactly the same as it was this year. One caveat. Just let me change one thing. Even if everything had happened out the same as far as the pandemic and the lockdowns and if all of that had stayed the same. If. If. We were mixing it up militarily somewhere. If. The president had allowed himself to be talked into boots on the ground in Syria. Or finally march into North Korea and take care of Kim Jong-un. He'd have been reelected. Because the military industrial complex would have stayed out of it. Make no mistake, you had a convergence of the ruling class, and that would be both Democrats and Republicans working together because at the end of the day, they want the outsider gone. And who makes that happen? Come on. Come on. So let me sum all this up for you. I know some of you are now concerned, well, that's it then. It's, it's, it's done. Now they're going to grab control of the Senate. I'm not so sure about that. And here's why. The powers that be, they all united because they wanted Donald Trump gone. But at the end of the day, the establishment side that calls themselves Republican, they don't want to be rendered completely irrelevant. The way they they have some leverage and keep the other group at the table so that they can bargain and make all their backroom deals back and forth with each other. They have to somehow stay in control of something. So I promise you, the GOP establishment, the Republicans, that side, they will fight to keep Georgia. There, there won't be any shenanigans with that election that, that, that they'll be allowed to get away with. That, that'll be done straight up. Or if there are shenanigans, all of a sudden, now the courts will step in and now things will fall into place. And I can't have that. See, that was the backroom trade-off. It was the, okay, look. If we're going to get back to 
the way things ought to be, the status quo, the globalist agenda. Fine. We're, we're going to we'll let you have the White House. And we'll make a show of it for Congress, but we're going to keep the Senate. Let's see if I'm right, prophetic, or a fool. Hey, that's it for this late night rant on a Friday night. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you give us a thumbs up and a like. I'm on Parlor. I'm on Rumble. Somewhere I'm on Rumble. My videos are there. The only reason I'm able to find them is because it automatically logs me into my page, but nobody else can seem to find my stuff on Rumble. I don't get how it works over there. That said, <laughs> make sure you smack the bell and, and click the word all to get notification of my next rant.